focus. Okay. Today we're gonna be drawing some dogs and I'm gonna focus on some chihuahuas. The first chihuahua I'm gonna draw a little tiny chihuahua. The one everybody and their Mexican tia has that they carry in their little purse. You know, the one that's like light brown and he barks at you all the time and he has like the biggest ears and he looks like a little torta. That's the kind of chihuahua that I'm going to be drawing today. He um, was fairly simple to draw. I had a little bit of issues with the face at first, but uh, I kind of narrowed it down. I'm used to drawing pugs, so some of the proportions might be slightly off because my pug is amazingly not proportionate <laughs> and he's awesome. The one on the top right is uh, just like a little cartoony version of a chihuahua. And it was a nice little warm up, it didn't take too long, so it was like a nice confidence booster. This is kind of like a, like a study on chihuahuas, so I wasn't trying to be super exact with proportions, but I was trying to make them look like chihuahuas, that's for sure. Like, I'm not gonna lie and be like, oh yeah, it's five minute doodles. No, I, I took my time. Uh, the one in the middle was one of my favorites. He has the nicest, pointiest ears, and his legs are so skinny compared to his face. And he just looks, he just looks funny. He's, he's nice to look at, so he was my favorite one. And the little bandana was a nice little touch. All of these images came from Pinterest, so if you want to check those out, uh, type in Chihuahuas. The one on the top right looks not that good. So this is what I'm talking about when I tell you the proportions are off. In this one, you're going to see that the eyes are very close together and they're very big. And I did go back and fix this later, but if you just look at it now, the the eyeballs are just huge and they should be smaller and and I, I didn't do that. He looks like a Siamese cat. We are going to skip over the bad dog in the bottom. I don't know. He looks super weird to me. I just kind of gave up on him for the moment and I moved on to Jim. So Jim is the little doggy that I'm drawing right now, the one on the left, and he kind of takes like the centerpiece even though he's not on the center. Like I made him a lot bigger and I shaded him in because Jim is actually the dog I'm practicing all of this for. My friend recently went to Austin and she adopted uh, Jim. He's a diabetic chihuahua. He's an elderly dog. And she commissioned me to do a little portrait. So I was like, oh, well, let me, you know, start getting the proportions down. And then, you know, the the fur and the colors and the eyes and everything. And then I'll go and, and draw Jim. So that's what this little study is for. For Jim. Um, I'll put the link down below of the place where she adopted Jim. Um, I forget the name. I will post it and um, if you're in the Austin area, you know, stop by, check out the doggies, give them a home, you know, they're very friendly and super excited to see you. It's a very nice facility too. And the people are very friendly there. I went with her at the beginning of the year and she rescued another Chihuahua. His name was Bean. He was awesome. I also did a portrait of him. Uh, this brush that I'm like throwing at the camera so you could stare at is uh, a Velvet Touch brush. And just like the name says, it feels like velvet. It feels very nice on your hands. And um, I don't know. I wouldn't be able to tell you how much they cost individually. I can't remember because they came in a palette full box. Um, so yeah, but I wouldn't mind having the whole collection. I went around with um, a color around each of the dogs. And you're going to see that throughout the video. So the first one is orange. And I'll be referring to the dogs by their outline color. So second one is green. And he's a very, he was painted very simply, but I think he was the most successful painting out of the whole spread. Excuse me. And the reason why I think that is because it was so simple and the shadows were in the right places that he just looked the most complete and also I don't know, he just looked like, I wouldn't say real, I don't want to call it real, he just looked right, okay? He just looked good. Um, the one, the orange one, I feel like the, the paint's a little busy, um, it was my first painting of the day, so, eh, I don't know. 
It looks kind of muddy in my opinion. Uh, so for this green dog, the green chihuahua has uh, just a couple of spots and I use some raw umber. Yeah, I use some raw umber and a little yellow ochre on the ears. And that's those are the colors that I, that I mainly use. The gray I mix myself. Um, if you don't have a gray on your palette and you also don't have black, just go with comp yeah, complementary colors. So like red and green, yellow and purple. For this one, I did yellow and purple and a little bit of blue because I wanted it to be a little bit more cool toned. And that, that I'm really happy with that shade. That's a nice shade of green. I mean green, gray. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, green is the color that I use, the emerald green, for his bandana. I kind of messed up here a little bit. I was trying to fix the circle and I was fixing it and I was fixing it and I was... Yeah, no. Yeah, yep. Yeah, it just got carried away there. I figured leaving some white will look nice. Also in the reference image, he had white. I'm using some raw umber to darken the eyes, deepen them, and I feel like he looks... I mean, not realistic, but he he's, he's alive, he's there. Now I'm gonna start color blocking Jim very loosely because I did shade him in with pencil. Um, so I'm not trying to be the neatest with Jim. I'm just kind of trying to get a feel for where the colors go on his body so that when I do it in color pencil I know exactly what areas to leave white so that I can leave space for uh, some highlights and also his gray hairs and this really helped actually and having the, the pencil underneath helped too his, his muscle is kind of like a peachy tone, so I just for this one I just kind of watered down the burnt sienna. I didn't really like mix any colors. Maybe I, I could have put some like yellow ochre in there. Maybe that would have been too, too, too yellow. I don't know. And then I went with like a blue outline to contrast the burnt sienna, the, the orange and the burnt sienna. And also I figured it would look nice. Uh, across the orange dog. The skin on Jim, where his fur has kind of like variations to it, so there is some black on him too. So I make some more gray and kind of like overlay that on top. And I think this, the gray on Jim is actually, or the black is red and green mixed together. I got a big marker and kind of erased that patch of that random patch of orange because I felt like it just it wasn't doing anything for the drawings. So I figured I would cover it up and it also helped me kind of like clean up the border around the orange dog. And I just kind of filled it all in and I started blocking all of the, the little doggies. And and I think that was a good idea because I don't know, you tell me, but I feel like with the color blocking the drawing looks more unified, like the spread. And also, if you do this, you can cover up all your mistakes. This all the way over to Jim. And because I did this, I feel like Jim now looks like he's part of the spread because he is facing away from the rest of the dogs. Also, he's a lot bigger and he's completely on another page. He kind of looked a little bit isolated. So I think having that uh, that box around him really, really helped tie him to the other chihuahuas. Oh my god, that bat chihuahua looks horrible. It's like the one on the right bottom side. Like a bat and a rat and a chihuahua. Alright, so my marker started running out. It's a good tip in case this happens. You can use your marker for texture, so this is like the perfect time for me to put some like of that dark fur on Jim. So that was nice. I tried doing another dog and it just wasn't working out. So I got one of those rubber erasers and I just started like erasing my life away. 
um, I would recommend using these if you have if you're heavy-handed like me and just press really really harshly onto the paper I think these are the best ones to get rid of your marks I had to pick I love the needed eraser because it's not messy and look look at all the freaking little pieces of eraser shreds that are under my my notebook all right so this one I completely changed the image I went for like a happy-go-lucky chihuahua this is the chihuahua that you wish you got but really you got the green chihuahua and he just like barks at you he's freaking cute so this is like your dream chihuahua, you know? The one you always see on the street and your chihuahua just bites you every time you try and pet him. I don't know, does anybody else have feisty chihuahuas? That's just my experience. I don't have a chihuahua, but my friend used to have one and man, she was mean. The Snoop Dogg looking chihuahua on the left, Ugh. so I mean I'll be keeping him but I'm changing some things around. I'm gonna leave the drawing, what happened? Oh I'm gonna leave the drawing as it is, I'm just gonna redraw him and then I'm gonna go in with uh, my pencil and create some shadows. The original image is beautiful and it looks like they did it in pen. And I mean, I love pen drawings. I love how they look. And I was trying to keep it minimalistic with the line work, but it was just looking like a floating alien head. And it still kind of does. I think it's because his eyes are kind of bulky and bulging out of his, I don't know. Does it look like an alien to you? I think he turned out cute. I. I was struggling a little bit with his, with, blah, 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 with his eyes because I wasn't sure that I was conveying the emotion that he had on his face. He was kind of like pissed off. Like maybe you woke him up from a nap and he was like super asleep or maybe he was like falling asleep and he fell out of the couch. I went with red for him because he looks kind of violent. But also I figured it would look nice next to the green complementary colors and all. And then it's a nice analogous color next to the orange. I'm going to deepen the chest area a little bit with some more yellow because it was looking kind of bland. So I, I think that kind of pulled it together a little bit. All right. And now let's cover up my mistakes with the sharpie, handy dandy sharpie. You know, the one on the bottom right kind of looks like a corgi. <laughs> uh, the one on the top right, uh, I went with a different color scheme. So I tried some gray, some uh, burnt umber, burnt umber, <laughs> some uh, raw umber and yellow ochre um, I don't think he's my favorite painting right now but it turned out at the end it turned out okay this is the finished product I'm pretty happy with most of these the top one that I was just talking about came out okay the little one next to it is my least favorite um, it looks a little muddy and the bottom one it just he needs a, a little bit more work like it's not enough color ranges. And I think these four right here are the ones I like the most. And the three on the side, eh, más o menos. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.